Hello. I know. I know. I'm here. Um, I'm here impromptu. This was not planned. I never plan. Well, I do. That's, that's, that's a lie. I do plan, but I feel very impulsive. So here I am being just really impulsive. So I'll just wait for you guys to trickle in and then we will, we need to chat. We need, we need to chat. So that's why I'm here. Hi guys. Hello, hello, hello. I know surprise, you know, because I love to surprise. Can you guys hear me? Number one. The title resonates with you already. Okay, good. Good. Yes, this is live. Yeah, I'm live. I I like, you know, I like to surprise you guys here and there. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, good. Because last time I went live, I had problems with this mic. Hello, everyone. I just wanted to say, yeah, you know what? It is leap day. I just channeled Virgo, just posted for Virgo, um, Virgo scrying messages. And I'm sitting here and I'm about to do the collective read, but I'm just like, how can I do a collective reading and the collective thing here with me? So I need to go live and feel your collective energy while we do this, this reading. Um, that I channeled on February 23rd, and I've pretty much been avoiding doing this reading until today, where spirit truly just pushed me to do it. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm going through a transformation right now, um, not just externally, but internally. I, I'm, I'm going through a lot. <laughs> I'm going through a lot, but we're here. We're, we're pushing through. Um. So we're going to jump right in. Um, I'm probably going to do some sharing as well. Thank you. Thank you. I have to get them whitened. Um, that's like my next step. But thank you so much. Thank you, guys. <laughs> thank you. I love you guys so much. Um, I've missed you too. So I really wanted to come live. Thank you. So um, I'm sure you guys have seen the um, the channeled messages on February 23rd that I posted for the collective read. So I'm going to just kind of walk you through them. And I'm also going to do a little bit of sharing. Um, so there's going to be a lot of me talking, but we'll also get into the cards So I just want to make sure I, I think I have my moderators. I do. I don't know if I do. Why do I always have to? I'm sorry, just before we get into it. I feel like I always have to like add moderators. I don't know why. But Penelope, I just made you a moderator. Holly, I just made you a moderator. Thank you, guys. You're so sweet. Okay, so on February 23rd, I channeled a lot for the collective. And initially, it came through as a vision. And the vision that I saw was the vision of the high priestess just sitting, just, you know, in the regular um in the regular uh, Raider White Tarot, which she's just sitting with the book, the scroll, um, the Akashic Records, for some who believe in that. Um, I do. <laughs> the Akashic Records, I do. Um, so a lot of people have a lot of different things to say about what the high priestess is holding. Is she holding? What is she holding? What kind of secrets is she holding? Is it the Akashic Records? What kind of information? Is it the scrolls? Is it like what, what information is she holding? And when she appeared to me in the vision, like that's all that I could focus on. I was like, what is she holding in her hand? What is she holding in her hand? And I never would fixate on that before with the high priestess. I never had that fixation when she would appear in visions, but that was the focus of like, what on earth is the high priestess holding in her hand? And then out of nowhere, 
um, she shifted for me and she had the Ace of Swords in her hand. And it reminded me of how Thor would recall his hammer. And to me, that is a recall of power. So there's some kind of recall of truth that is taking place here with the high priestess that I'm seeing. And this is 100% connected to your capabilities, your gifts, and your intuition, you are recalling your power in the space of intuition, of your intuitive insights, the information that you receive, um, new downloads, information. I think I just repeated myself there. Um, and any other psychic gifts that you that you have or that you may be coming into. As soon as I saw that vision, I heard, you're not being shown, you're just seeing. And I was just like, okay, as if spirit was literally being really firm with me and saying, you're not being shown anymore. Like the high priestess, because I was like, I think this is why I was so fixated on her. I'm sorry. I was so fixated on her because I was just like, what's in the book? What's in the book? What's in the book? What can you show us? What can you show us? And spirit was, spirit was like, you're not being shown anymore. You're just seeing. At first, I felt like, oh my gosh, spirit's no longer showing me. And that's not the case. Now you have the ace of swords. Now you are the high priestess. Now you are confident in your gifts. Now you're stepping into your intuitive power more so that you're not being shown. You're just going to be seeing that you don't need your hand held when you are walking in the veil, when you're walking through the veil or when you have one foot in and one foot out. Now, this message ties into the vision that I saw for Pisces season where I saw the light of the moon melting illusions and, and distorted discerning. Now, what is distorted discerning? Distorted discerning is thinking something is what it is not. And I feel like we are learning right now how to see. I'm seeing numbers 11, 22, 404, and 411. And I feel like you are understanding the mechanics of your gifts and how, intric how intricately, excuse me, they work in certain situations and in certain circumstances in your life. I kept getting this like pit in my stomach that when I was going to do this reading, there's something about showing examples of my own distorted discerning. And I almost felt like ashamed that I distortedly discerned some things in my past, but isn't that the lesson? Isn't that what we all go through? There's no shame in getting it wrong. There's no shame in, well, this is what I saw, but that's not what it was. I feel fucking shitty. I feel embarrassed. And I feel like that's such a natural feeling a feeling embarrassed and a feeling ashamed of getting something wrong but please don't have no shame in that that feeling is going to pass you're going to feel relieved you are going to feel empowered because you are going to see things for what they really are i'm getting really warm <laughs> i'm getting really warm because i have felt embarrassed before and it's not like no one embarrassed me, but I felt embarrassed for myself because I have gotten things wrong regarding men in my life. And now this is not just, this is not going to be just a love reading. This is going to be encapsulating your journey as well as love, but I'm going to be showing examples to you of what I had experienced recently and what I'm starting to understand how my gifts work. So very specifically, I'm starting to understand how my dreams work, which is something that I've always struggled with. So there may be um, a gift of yours that is really hard to, um, to compartmentalize it's really hard to understand, but you are going to understand it. So for me, it's my dreams. I can usually 
I can usually um, discern my dreams fairly well if it has nothing to do with me. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I think I do. And I think it has something to do with my own bias or like confirmation bias when, um, you know, I, I desperately want a good sign. I, des I desperately want a good message for myself. I desperately like want positive things. I want to hear positive things from spirit. So I see a sign or I have a dream and I'm like, oh, that's positive. And then it's not. And I'm just like, oh my God, fuck. Like, how, how was I so wrong? But it's because of my own bias. But when it comes to other people, I'm not in it. And I can just like, the energy is just is what it is. And I'm just like, boom, 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 like seeing it for what it is, because it has nothing to do with me. I'm so red right now, because this is the, you know, when you get embarrassed, and you feel shame, like, that's see how red I am. It's going through my body. <laughs> So for me, my dreams have been very, very hard for me. So story time. So that's the channeled messages. Okay. Sorry, I'm not pausing to read your comments. I'm just, I'm just going to flow and, and pass through this embarrassed energy right now. <laughs> I'm not embarrassed right now. It's just remembering and telling the story was actually a block for me of doing this reading. And I told spirit I was like, Spirit, I really don't want to do this fucking reading. If like, if anyway, like, can I do something else? <laughs> and I know I can't get out of it. I have to just push through it. So um, again, this is not just about love. This is about, you know, your journey, but going to share some stories, okay, of how fucking wrong I was. Um, but again, I perceived it as being wrong, but you're not wrong. You're just learning how your intuition works. You're learning how your gifts work. So I get dreams of the men that I'm about to meet. And there were four very significant men in my life. Um, men that I will never forget. Men that have challenged me, that have taught me lessons, that I have loved or thought I loved. Um and they have always, they, I saw them in my dream before they appeared in real life for them. Um, to the point where like, it was scary. Like it was scary how accurate that dream was. And every single time I thought, this is the love of my life. Every single one. Every single one. I was like, oh, this is this is it. This is the love of my life. Nope. Oh, the second one, this is the love of my life. Because he came into my dream. Nope. Third one, this is the love of my life. No. <laughs> Absolutely fucking not. Fourth one, the one recent, very recent, who was in my life for less than a month. I learned. <laughs> I learned and I didn't get into it. I learned. All of these men, yes, they were karmic contracts. And I have a theory that for me, and this can apply to all, um, can you guys still hear me? Hello? Can you guys still hear me? Um, all of my dreams were warnings. Okay, thank you guys. You guys are so cute. I love you guys so much. All of my dreams were warnings. Every single one. Every single one. They were warning me that I was going to get into a karmic contract. I truly believe that it was my soul, my higher soul, my not even my future self. It wasn't my. It didn't feel like my future self. 
it it also wasn't from spirit. Spirit was not warning me. I know when spirit sends me a message, this was me. This was me warning myself. It was my soul. It was my higher soul that you're about to get into a karmic contract. You're about to learn a very important lesson and good luck. You're going to be fine. You're going to get over it. You're going to learn eventually and you're going to move on. And some of these dreams were so weird because I knew exactly how I would feel with them. I knew how sad I felt in that dream. In one dream, I I was looking for someone. I couldn't find him. I was looking, looking, and looking for him. And that man we were never in a relationship with. I was, we were never connected in a relationship, but I was looking for him in my dream. Was it a past life? Probably where we were never together. The second man, another dream, I saw his outfit. I knew exactly what he did for work. I knew um, how sexually attracted I was to him. I'm being candid. Um, right now, so please don't judge me. Um, I'm literally sweating over here. Um, I was so sexually attracted to this man in my dream, never even fucking met him. And he sent me letters in my dream. And I was sitting there on a bench with other women and he handed me a letter. He literally came over and handed me a letter and all the other women watched. So I knew that he was either um, very handsome. I knew that he, I know, I knew what kind of work he did because I saw something. I don't want to say it just, you know, to keep his anonymity, I guess. I think that's the word. Um, um, I knew he was attractive. I knew he dated other women. I knew he probably didn't want a relationship because there were other women. I knew he was dating other people, things like that. And then I met him. That was exactly what happened in our relationship. Um, the third dream, um, I actually don't want to talk about this guy, um, for my own safety. So I'm not going to talk about him. Um, the fourth guy, however, um, that was a lesson (laughs) that I learned finally, (laughs) that I learned finally. Um, it came in so quick. Um, I actually had this dream of this guy back in 2022, and two years later, I met him. I actually forgot that I even had a dream of this guy, and I was wondering when I was going to, going to meet him. And I finally met him, and I immediately saw the red flags. I immediately saw the red flags, and he was almost like convincing me that we were soulmates, we were this, we were that. And I knew that that wasn't it. Like there was something in my gut that was like, no, this guy is just definitely not it. And, um, hi, sweetheart. I'm going to make you, um, a moderator. Hi, honey. Um, He was in my life for less than a month, less than a month. And I knew the signs immediately, but he was trying to convince me otherwise without saying what he was thinking this was, but I knew exactly what it was not. But it was almost like he was convincing me that it was something when I knew in my gut that it wasn't that. So that's when I realized I was like, oh my God holy fuck, all my dreams were warnings. They were not, but I perceived it as these were the, this, this guy is the love of my life. This guy's a love of my life. This guy's a love of my life because that is what I desired. That's what I want. That's what I want. So I was biased and I got into things thinking it was something that it wasn't but I learned on the fourth one. (laughs) I learned. (laughs) So close that very quickly. 
I closed that very quickly. So now I'm starting to understand how my dreams work. Okay. Now, I don't know if Ariel is on, but so I'm understanding how my dreams work pertaining to like people and men very specifically, like the people that, excuse me, I have contracts with their warnings. Um, I don't know if Ariel's still on, but Ariel did um, is a, a beautiful friend of mine, and she did a human design reading for me. Um, and this human design reading for me was so spot on. And um, in her reading, she talked about my human design as I'm someone that needs permission, that needs to ask for permission in order to proceed. That is why I always, and I just put two and two together yesterday, that's why I always thank you guys before I do a reading. I thank you for allowing me to read for you today. Thank you for trusting me with your energy because I need permission in order to get in or else I won't get in. I won't. I won't. That is how my energy works. That is how I work, not only as a human, but as a spirit, as an, a being, as an entity in the veil. Like I... I need to, I think I'm a projector. Yes. Yeah. I think, I think so. Yeah. I don't, again, I don't know if she's on. Um, yes, I'm a projector. So I need permission. And this is why also when you get a personal reading from me, um, I need permission. Like, so I think this is why like I ask people when they do per when they get a personal reading from me, I ask them, "Hey guys, like please share whatever it is that you are comfortable with sharing. Please describe a little bit more of this situation." Um because I felt I feel like when someone describes a situation to me, when someone elaborates on something, it kind of brings the tip of the iceberg forward to me and gives me permission to go deep. Because if you think YouTube readings are deep, just imagine a personal read. And so again, it's like, okay, so this person is describing the situation for me. This is in turn permission to go into that situation to the depth that I can go into. And I realized that I actually don't need any information. <laughs> I don't need you guys to sh tell me anything about what you're going through being a psychic and um, an energy reader. I don't even need to know your zodiac, your birthday, your birth chart. I don't need to know any of that. I, I don't even ask for your, your zodiac sign. But by you guys just requesting a personal reading from me, that in of itself is giving me permission. So I realized that yesterday while I was laying in bed and it was like one o'clock in the morning and I'm like, oh, they're already giving me permission. I don't need to sit there and ask them, hey, do you mind like sharing this with me so that you're giving me permission to read this energy? I don't need to do that because they've already requested a reading. They've already given permission. So I'm learning how my gifts are working right now. <laughs> Trial and error. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning how it works. And I feel like I'm not the only one. And this is why I'm sharing my story. This is why I'm giving you guys examples of, I feel like this is the best way that I can describe this energy. Yeah, paying for the reading, requesting the reading is permission. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I know I'm not the only one. I know you guys are we're all in the same collective sphere of energy right now where we're seeing 
we are seeing, we're not being shown, we are seeing the signs, we are seeing the dreams, we're seeing the information, we're in the veil, and we're seeing right now, and we are no longer distortedly discerning our intuition, we are discerning with our Ace of Swords with truth, truth, excuse me, the vision with the High Priestess holding the Ace of Swords. So you may be experiencing very similar epiphanies like me, you may be looking back and you're just like, Oh my God, all of that was a warning. Why didn't I see that before? So if you're having these realizations, that is you understanding how your intuition works in particular circumstances and situations. Yes, connecting the dots. Yes, I might, I'm still so warm. What do I mean design? So it's called a human design. Um, I'm not an expert at it. I Someone had to read it for me. It's a human design chart. It's very similar to like birth charts. Thank you, Penelope. So let's just pick up on what other messages need to come through. Yeah, I feel like it, I feel like it's not unlock. Well, you are unlocking new aspects of your gifts, but I feel like the message here is truly um is truly understanding and discerning your intuition and your gifts is is what this message is. Um, yeah, I just heard, um, new phase, new phases, new phases. Light initiation, great teacher, awakening and divine magic. The taught thought light codes. Wow. And see, that's this energy. That's this energy of, um, you know, we're always dancing between the teacher and the student energies. Like right now, I am a student and I'm shifting into teacher. But sometimes I, I shift into student and I'll, I'll stay in student for a very long time and then I'll shift into teacher. So I feel like you are having, we're all moving again. We're all in this collective sphere right now together. And we're shifting into a great teacher awakening where we are expressing our divine magic, but also with the understanding of how our divine magic works in this real world, in this, maybe real world is not the right term, but in this 3d world, I should say. Can you, can you hear me or no? Let me know if you guys can hear me or not. I just saw someone saying the voice is gone. Okay, we're good. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sorry, honey. I don't know why the voice is gone on your end. Wow. So you have your karmic release. Ancestral realm, healing the lineage and boundaries. So I feel like this is connected to the examples that I was giving of karmically releasing. Thank you so much, Sheena. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that so much. Thank you. Thank you, honey. So there's a lot of karmic release happening here. It's interesting because there's a light here that is being shown in the, in the ancestral realm the light shown. And here it says light initiation. Sorry, where is it? Uh, here it says light initiation. So I don't always read galactic energies, but there's definitely um, like a new codex of information that you're understanding. So again, back to the gifts of discerning with the ace of swords 
I'm seeing that this truth, your understanding of gifts, it's you almost like reading. You're capable of reading the light codes is what I'm seeing here. Like that's how I'm seeing it energetically. You're capable of understanding the light codes of your magic. I'm seeing um, also... Oh my God, I love this deck. I do. And I'm not really keen on galactic energies just because they throw me in a weird space sometimes that I don't like. But when they come through and they make sense to me, I I love it. I love it. Um, boundaries are really important right now too. Boundaries. I feel like once you understand how your divine sacred magic works and you're understanding these 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 uh codex of information within your magic okay this is weird sorry i need to park that because i just saw i just saw a vision of ancestors giving you some kind of new some kind of new magic from the ancestral realm so you are getting some kind of new magic because you've healed the lineage you've karmically released. You know what's really crazy is that it's not just from your ancestors, but it's also from your past lives. And this is connected to this Virgo reading that I did. Um, I think it was the last one where I saw the hand and it was like gifting gifting the magic from the past life, the res magical reserve of energy that you need that's required to take you to the next phase of your life. So I am seeing that here. And when this magic is given to you or is provided to you, this next level of magic, of, div of divinity, it's very sacred that it needs protection. It needs boundaries. Wow, you're being attuned. Oh my God. I was just like, what, what is all this light here? And this is the Seraphim's gateway, voice activation, angelic attunement, and divine support. You're being attuned to this new magic right now. Wow. You're being attuned to the understanding of how your intuition is working, how the magic is working through you. Um and the new magic that you're being initiated into to, to learn. It's interesting because I'm seeing with this, with this, um, with this group that I'm picking up on, you are teaching and you are learning at the same time. You're teaching something, some kind of knowing that you are very comfortable. And as soon as you teach something, something, a new energy comes in for you to learn is what I'm seeing here. Because you see um, Thoth, Thoth, the hand, it's almost like giving information out to people. And then with the other hand, it's receiving this new magic this new information from the ancestral realm that you are being attuned to so not only are you giving information you're teaching information but you're also learning new does that make sense so you're there's this balance i'm seeing libra energy i'm seeing justice you're the teacher and the student right now let's shift Yeah, that's beautiful, Deanna. There are um there are no numbers on these cards. So let's keep flowing. Let's keep flowing. I'm so happy I came live. <laughs> 
And it's funny because I tried to do this recorded and I was so annoyed. I was so annoyed with myself. I was like, no, no. So I'm also getting the message that as much as, you know, spirit is not showing you, you're just seeing this message that spirit said to me, you're not being shown. You're just seeing there's, they still support you in the veil, in the realms of the, you know, the ancestor, ancestral realm, the realms of, you know, the spirit realms that you, that you, that you also reside in, that you travel to, to receive information and just to chill out, you know, <laughs> I feel like, um, Spirit is giving you encouragement, encouragement now to really step into and and ease into your magic, ease into your power, and trust your intuition more so um, with greater confidence and the greater awareness that you're seeing. But they're also – they want you to know, like, that they also support you here with divine support. So this would be a really good time to thank your ancestors, okay? To thank spirit. Yeah, exactly, Kristen. It's that's exactly it. You're not being shown, you're just seeing. Yeah. You do not need to be shown anymore. It's this energy of like the training wheels are off because now you can see. So trust in what you see. And you're seeing with discernment, with clarity, that Ace of Swords, that vision with the with the High Priestess and the Ace of Swords, and you're not, um, you're no longer distortedly discerning what you see or what you feel. Oh, thank you. I do ignore haters. I do. I block them. You know what's really interesting? Um, what I'm seeing now, it's interesting I read that comment um, because of boundaries. Boundaries are very, very important right now. But what's also really interesting that I'm seeing is mimicry. So you're going to be seeing mimicry. You're going to be seeing people that are slightly copying what you do. Um, take that as a compliment. Take that as a compliment. Eventually, those people are going to get into their authenticity. I feel like those people are, are just trying to find their way. Um, but I have been noticing a few mimicry and um, I'm taking it as a compliment. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. People are finding their way. It's okay. It's okay. So you may be noticing mimicry. Um, yeah. But boundaries. Okay. Imitation. Yes, that's the right word. Imitation. Yeah, mimicry. Oh my God, make a wish. This card always comes out. 25. I just, I love this. I love this card so much. It's so beautiful. Make a wish. Let's get one more. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. It's too many came out. I'm like, how much do I have to share here, Spirit? As soon as that card came out, I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to share that. I don't want to share that. I may. Okay, yeah, fuck. they're not going to bring any more cards. <laughs> I'm like, I'm shuffling, I'm channeling, and they're like, talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. So, um, maybe I'll just like end the stream here. No. Um, again, it's like, it, it goes back to this energy of don't feel embarrassed. Don't feel ashamed of getting it wrong. Um, I have mani – okay, so I can manifest very quickly. 
I can manifest I can manifest so quickly it actually scares me. Um and it's something that I realize about myself that I've always done actually. Even as a young girl because as soon as I saw this card I saw a young girl, I saw my younger self. Um when I was young, I everything I would dream would come to pass. Everything that I wished on would come true. Everything that I asked for help, I would get the help. If I prayed for someone, they received that prayer. They received that help, and I was praying on their behalf. Um, spirit wants to give you this confirmation that what you wish just come through does come true. But also be careful of what you wish for. Because I have also manifested things that I shouldn't have. <laughs> um, I have gotten myself into predicaments that I shouldn't have been in. Um, I have caused trouble. <laughs> I have caused trouble. I feel like I'm my ancestors' worst nightmare sometimes. I feel like spirit just like... Because, listen, what you touch turns to gold. And I'm here with Midas touch. And this, again, this is Virgo's energy. Virgo had... I'm. You don't have to be a Virgo to connect to this reading. I'm just... Virgo had this message of whatever you touch turns to gold, and that is this Midas touch, and I channeled Virgo's energy today, so there's a lot of Virgo collective messages here, but again, you don't have to be a Virgo to connect to this reading. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, what you touch turns to gold. But you really got to be careful what you wish for. I I had this debate with someone as well where, um, you know, I shared so candidly. This is someone who I thought was a friend, but they weren't. Um, and they said, well, you you attracted that because that's your energy. And I was like, no, I'm – I didn't attract this. I created this. There's a difference between attracting and creating, I think. I think. This is my opinion. Just based on the energy. Because you can attract, like you can create something that is not great for you because Sometimes you create out of want and not out of need or desire. Sometimes you create out of desperation. I will share something. Oh, fuck. So much, so much transparency here today. Um, I, a long, a long time ago, not any time, not recent, I created, I manifested someone out of desperation because I wanted to be in a relationship. I will tell you something, that spirit removed that man so quickly out of my life. And I realized 10 years later, <laughs> 10 years later that I was just desperate. So this goes back to divine support. And this is what I'm saying. Like this whole message, this whole channeled message is about understanding your intuition and how it works. Understanding how powerful 
your divine magic is and using it appropriately within reason, okay, and using it for your highest good. This is why they say, what is your intention? Whenever you do magic, whenever you do spells, whenever you do manifestation and law of attraction, what is your intention? What is the energy behind your words? What is the energy behind the wish? Is it out of need? Is it out of love? It is, is, is it out of want? Is it out of desperation? What is it? Because you will get the energy that is behind your intention. That is what you will receive. So make a wish. But be careful. I'm telling I'm this message is so powerful right now because a lot of you are extremely powerful. And there's this energy right now with magic that I feel like a lot of people are I feel like okay, I'm, I don't know where this is going to go exactly, but I feel like a lot of people are becoming authentically themselves. And authenticity is unique power. Authenticity is so fucking powerful. We're all snowflakes. <laughs> We're all unique. And there's so much information out there. There are so many readers. There are so many psychics. There are so many intuitives and healers and, and, and information from our ancestors and the magic that they have learned through their ancestors and they're passing it down to you where now you are learning it and then you are also teaching something that you have learned and you're being attuned to new magic right now and you're also creating your own world. Like there's just so much divine magic right now that people are in possession of and they're using it. Use it wisely. Use it very wisely because this is not a joke. This is not something that is to be taken lightly. This is sacred energy. And you are unique. How you receive this magic is going to be different for all of you. There is not one way to live life, right? So there is not one way of doing magic, just like how there's there's not one way of, again, living. There's, again, there's so much information out there that is very hard and easy. Actually, it's very easy to fall susceptible to doing magic this way because it's what so-and-so has said it to be, because that's what her or his ancestors told him, but that's not what you need to be doing. This is why I always empower you guys. You can listen to me until the sun comes up or the, or the moon comes, whatever. You can listen to me, but at the end of the day, it's about you. The power is not with me. As I always say, the power is within you. So this is why, again, you're not being shown. You are just seeing. We're always going to circle back to this channeled message. You are unique. There is not one way of reading energy. There is not way, one way of being psychic. There is not one way of, of doing this journey. If spirit shows us, for example, if spirit shows us an energy, every single one of us would see it differently. 
if spirit was like paint a picture of the energy that you see, every single painting would be different. Every single one. So I empower you today as you make this wish, as you make your dreams come to life, use your authentic magic. Use your energy and not what someone else has told you to do. And I think this message came up in Aries reading with the magician in the mirror. This also came up uh, for Pisces reading as well. <laughs> Not doing whatever people tell you to do. Do what you want to do. And again, it's so easy to fall susceptible because there's so much information out there. There are so many videos about law of attraction. Do this. Don't do this. The 10 things to not to do in law of attraction. The 15 things to do in law of attraction. This is how magic works. This is They're getting information based on their experience, their, their knowledge, and their ancestral lineage. That does not mean that it aligns for you or it's aligned to your highest good. That can be detrimental to you. Just because it works for someone else does not mean that that energy works in your space. We all have different codes of information, different codes of design, and so on and so forth. That is why this information and message is so important today because there is so much information out there today. <laughs> Everywhere I look, and I think it's because like I dived into personal readings and I'm seeing how people ask for things and what they need to hear or what they want to hear. And I'm just like, this is my purpose, isn't it? To remind you that you have the power and it's not sitting on a person that has a social media account telling you about what magic is. It's you, your magic. It's in your heart. It's in your soul. It's in your lineage. It's in your DNA. So I see you here making a wish. I see you here creating and building, and growing, and wearing a crown of gold. And your power of intention is making this wish come true. You know, this is why I was so afraid of, um, you know, even starting my channel. I was so afraid because I knew I was different, but I tried to hide in with the crowd so that I wouldn't be seen. Oh, I love that, Christopher. You're good with your curly brown hair as your crown. Yeah. You know what's interesting, Christopher? You saying that? I think that's why I dyed my hair back to my natural color. I mean, this is a little bit darker than my natural color, but it'll fade into my natural color soon. Um, I was tired of wearing other crowns. I was tired of dyeing my hair and being someone that I wasn't, even though I wore that crown of hair very well. I was so afraid of starting a YouTube channel because I knew I was so different. I knew I saw energy. I knew I had a, a purpose. I knew. But I purposefully blended in with the crowd out of fear. And now that I'm here... Now that I'm here, 
oh my god, I I wouldn't. I don't want to be anywhere else. I love it here. I love the world I created. And that's how I want you to feel. I want you to feel in love with yourself. And I want you to feel in love with the world that you have created for you. For you. Now, we're shifting into love because I can feel it. <laughs> um, you know what's interesting? Like back to, you know, my the dreams that I had. I don't know how long. I've Okay, only an hour. Wow, I feel like I've been here for ages. Um, back to that dream that I had. Well, the dreams that I had of the men that were – they were all warnings. I have a feeling – that the, you know, the man that I'm going to meet for me, I'm not going to see him coming. I'm not going to see him coming. Because if my theory is correct and if I am truly feeling how my intuitive dreams are working in this area of my life, I'm not going to see him coming. I'm not supposed to see him coming. Because it's not a warning. So maybe that's also a message for some of you that you're not going to see your person coming. Surprises are good. I mean, I surprised you guys today. <laughs> Man, this spirit of time always comes out against the clock. Number 30. Number 30. Yeah, I surprised you guys today. I didn't tell you that I was coming, but I came anyway. Here I am. I'm getting Scorpio vibes. Wow, blessing in disguise. Yeah, so... I'm getting this message that, you know... The karmic soulmates were blessings in disguise is something that I'm seeing here. Oh, I love this card. This one came out for Pisces. And it was like, oh, give it a whirl. Give your give your um give your gifts a whirl. Give it a whirl. Give it a try. Here you have Forever Young, number um 38. Which is 11, 27, 30. Yeah, they won't show you. I will just see. Exactly. Exactly, Sarah. You always got to circle back to the channeled message. I mean, I'm telling you. The messages always circle back. Always cir circle back. Just let these channel in before I. Can someone tell me actually? Um... I'm feeling eclipse energy and I, is there one in March? I know there's one in April, but I think there's something that I'm picking up on in, in March. I'm getting March. I know we're moving into March. Yeah, your lessons. I love that. Thank you for saying that, Kristen. Yeah, your lessons have opened your eyes so that you could see. You know, what's interesting. You know how I was saying, like, you're not going to see them coming. Like, you're busy over here giving something a whirl, giving your gifts a whirl, and you're wearing glasses. <laughs> Excuse me. You're wearing glasses as if you won't be able to see them coming, but they're coming in perfect timing. This soulmate of yours, if you're on a twin flame journey, your twin flame, um...
whoever this person is. I'm getting this. The, look at all these colors. Thank you. Lunar eclipse in March, 325. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Jamie. I wouldn't get mad at that. If he comes today, you'll have muffins. Don't kill me. <laughs> um, I'm just looking at all these colors. The Seraphim's Gateway. All this pink and um, light colors. They're going together. Pink is love. Like unconditional love is something that I'm seeing here. I don't even care that this says forever young. But I'm seeing like an innocent energy. I'm getting a light energy, innocence, unconditional love, purity. Um, but the skulls are really interesting here. So I'm getting a really interesting Scorpio energy. You're painting your nails pink. Oh, that's nice. Thank you, Steph. Thank you so much. Thank you, sweetie. I appreciate that so much. You have your strong power. You tap into reserves you didn't know you had, and they help you get to the next level. Okay, literally, that's what karmics did. I just said that your karmic relationships in your life, whether they happened a year ago, a few months ago, whether you're currently going through a karmic relationship, whether, you know, it doesn't matter when you went through a karmic relationship in your life, there were blessings in disguise and they helped you to tap into reserves you didn't know you had to get you to the next level, to get you to the next level. And that is why this, this being here is holding the skulls. I know that's a little bit morbid to say, like, these are the skulls of your karmics relationships. <laughs> that's so morbid, but like, it's, it's, it's just energy, okay? It's just energetic. Like that's the the past. That is the that is the energy of the the relationships that have ended. Those are the lessons that have been learned. The skeletons, yes. <laughs> I hope none of them are watching. I just please stop. Just don't watch me. Um Yeah, that's what I'm seeing here. But just as, you know, they helped us get to the next level, I mean, that goes that's that's a that's a two-way street. Just as they have helped us get to the next level, we have helped them get to the next level. We have helped them learn the lessons that they needed to learn right? Learning, student, teacher, student, teacher. Yeah, a cul-de-sac of karmic stuff. That's, that's a really good way of putting it, Joyce. Yeah. Yeah. If they are watching, let that be their lesson. Don't kill me. <laughs> um. <sighs> I just I feel like there's there's an interesting rebirth here happening with this energy. It's a rebirth and it's your rebirth in unconditional love. And this is something new. You have your new world. There's a whole lot of fresh opportunities waiting for you if you just take a chance. And that's where these new lovers are coming in, which we'll get into. Um, but again, it's not just love. It's opportunities for your job, your career, your businesses, your personal development, your growth. Okay. Um, 
but I'm seeing I I did the I did a membership reading yesterday once yeah yesterday was Wednesday I did a pers- um a membership reading yesterday and I was talking about being seen in unconditional love have you ever truly seen yourself in unconditional love have you ever felt yourself being embraced by unconditional love if no you're about to You're about to. And that is also what these karmic relationships have also pushed you closer to. And just as we have pushed them closer to unconditional love. Like truly, we're all just pushing each other gently and lovingly towards unconditional love. I will share something again for like the gajillions time in this reading. Um... I just started feeling this energy and this is my current transformation right now. And this is what this transformation is for the collective. We're all going through this transformation together and we are giving it a whirl. (laughs) Give it a whirl. See how you feel in this energy of unconditional love, unconditionally loving yourself. And unconditionally feeling the love from the divinity. Have you ever felt yourself in this space? What do you look like here? What do you look like in the spaces of unconditional love? A lot of us have denied feeling this because we felt that we weren't undeserving or we weren't worthy. We spent ourselves and much of our time in Ten of Swords energy, in Three of Swords energy, feeling pain and heartbreak, trauma and wounds. And we said, this is what life is. This is what my life continued to be. And I need that. Like, that's what I'm comfortable with. And I did this reading, I think it was for Leo, where where I said, you're leaning away, but you didn't realize that you're leaning into divinity. You're leaning into unconditional love. And I feel a lot of us are starting to lean into divine's embrace. A lot of us are learning to lean into ourselves. And this energy truly makes you feel young. It That's this energy of young. It's the energy of making you feel alive, energetic, light. I want you to like think about that. I want you to think about it because if what you have known was darkness and pain and you guys know I love that, I love to transmute that shit because it's power, right? It's power. Shadow is power. Darkness is power. When we transmute it and it works for us, we own that shit. You know, I spent a lot of my time in the darkness, in the shadows, to the point that I became it. And I was so imbalanced that spirit said, you got to come to the light a little bit. You got to balance yourself. And I haven't felt myself in this energy up until recent, my whole life. Just recently, and I'm 34 years old. I'm 34, and I just started to feel and understand the light. And I started to ask myself, how do I feel in this? How do I feel in this energy? What do I look like in this energy? Mm. 
That's why I said I like it here. I like it here. Because now I'm balanced. I'm balanced with my dark, now with my light. I'm integrating light. And I feel like a lot of us are, are learning how to integrate light. Don't get me wrong. I love the dark. I love the dark and I have plenty of it. <laughs> but it, I needed the light to balance me out. Remember, it's a balance. If you have too much light, you're going to be imbalanced as well. You got it. It's always, you're always dancing between two things to balance it, okay? But a lot of us are integrating with our light energy now. So I want you to think of yourself, like ask yourself, how do you feel in unconditional love? What does that look like to you? How do you see yourself in these spaces? Because this is a space when you're balanced, excuse me, when you're balanced with your light and your dark, this door opens a new world. There's a whole lot of fresh opportunities awaiting for you if you just take the chance. And these energies, these fresh opportunities, including new love, is coming in perfect timing. I am a blessing and a curse. Yes. Yes. 1,000%. 1,000%. It is, yeah, it is eight this year. This is the year of karma. I posted that um, in January, Selena. I posted that in January on my Instagram saying that this is the year of karma. And you know, I paid my dues. I paid my dues. I paid to karma. I paid my, I know I paid my dues. I know I did. We're not sitting here being Miss Perfect. I own my shit. No one can tell me anything that I that I don't know all that I don't know myself. I thought I threw my ring, but it was just um it was just the candle wax that fell. But yeah, no one can tell me shit that I don't know about myself. I know my good and I know my bad and I know my and I know my demons and I know my ugly. I know them very well. We're like this. We're fucking tight. We're fucking tight. You can't me you can't tell me shit about shit. You can't tell me about me that I already don't know. I know. <laughs> I know. Yes, own it. Own it. Okay. We're just gonna pull cards. I don't know if spirit is going to reveal love in, in today's reading, but it is part of, again, this new world, fresh opportunities, fresh soulmates. I mean, it's this energy of unconditional love. Okay. Hold on. Ace of Cups. Told you. It's new love. I want to read this tarantula. And here you have Ace Eight of Cups. Blessings in disguise. Thank you, guys. Thank you.
Yeah, we talked about, um, you may need to rewatch it. Um, we talked about intuition and the channeled messages in the beginning. I want to read this tarantula. It's a fire energy. At a crossroad, claiming life's purpose. Oh my God, I'm so glad I'm reading this right now. Claiming life purpose at a crossroad. The tarantula represents a moment when a great decision must be made. It involves prioritizing your life's deeper purpose or dharma. A habit or routine from the past is, si is sidetracking you from your dream, yet a voice inside you keeps begging you to refocus your attention in order to find true happiness. You must choose dharma. Until you do, satisfaction will be fleeting. The tarantula hovers patient and calm like an old friend that knows your inner soul. It already knows you'll choose wisely. When in balance, I kid you not, it says follows intuition. I mean, this is everything that we have channeled today. Follows intuition. When out of balance, it's hesitation and over-intellectualizes. I mean, there is such thing as too much light. There is such thing as too much light. I'll say that one more time. There is such thing as too much light. This universe, this world is light and dark. If you have too much of one thing, you become imbalanced. If you eat too much of one fruit, you will get sick. If you eat too much of one thing, if you drink too much, you will probably be sick. If you eat too much of a good thing, you will get sick. Balance is the entirety of the universe. You are the universe. You need light and you need dark. That's why I always say love is light and dark. You cannot be love and light. You will be lying to yourself. It's not love and light. It's love, light, and darkness. I got to get that on a t-shirt and start wearing it and putting it on trend so people can get inside their head that it's love, light, and darkness. There's no such thing as being happy or joyful. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not here saying that you shouldn't be happy or joyful. I just talked about it. You're just going to be blocked because you're annoying. Like, this is part of my purpose. <laughs> it's interesting because today someone someone commented and they're like, you don't look like um, a tarot reader. I'm sorry, what does a tarot reader look like? Do I need to, What what does a tarot reader look like? I just spent in this message talking about uniqueness, talking about being you, being authentically you. If you want to swear, swear. That doesn't make you a bad person. If you want to have wine and be a little bit of a low vibrational person, go and be a low vibrational person. Why does it have to be bad? See, this is, this is you know, fuck this. <laughs> We're not talking about love today. It's coming in divine timing. The Ace of Cups will always be there. Your love will come in divine timing. We're going to talk about this. Love will come in divine timing. I feel like, and I was, I was sharing this with someone, 
you're also going to be blocked. Swearing is fine. That doesn't mean I'm projecting on others. You're also blocked. Um, if you want to show who you really are to me now, that's fine. Like you can you can come at me in any kind of way. If I were to be here, prim and proper, princess, I don't swear, I'm an angel, that's a fucking red flag. If I sat up here with fairy wings and told you I came from the sky and it's so beautiful and life is rainbows and unicorns, that's a fucking red flag. This is real fucking life. It's not rainbow and butterflies. It's not. Life is dark. Life is hard. But life is also beautiful. And magic is both. Light and dark. I was saying this to someone that I live my life in the entirety of the energetic spectrum, meaning I choose to be high vibrational and I also choose when to be low vibrational. That does not make me a bad person if I want to be low vibed one day. Being low vibrational is not a bad thing. Being low vibrational does not make you less of a spiritual person. Spiritual person. We will also get into that because we're getting into it now. Being high vibrational doesn't make you a good person either. You need to decide what makes you, you. If you want to dress up as a fairy and that's you, go right ahead. If you want to swear and that makes you feel more authentic in the moment because that's how you really fucking feel, Go right ahead. This is about what makes you you. Who are you in an energy, in a space full of faux people, fake ass people? Exactly, Char. We are not happy all the time. If someone is constantly fucking happy, you're, you're a red flag. That means you're hiding shit. That means you're projecting this happy mentality and I'm I'm fine and I'm good. I'm just going to think about the positive. You're also spiritually bypassing yourself. You're not being real. Those people fucking scare me. I don't want to be around those kinds of people. Thank you so much for that. <sighs> Thank you for that. <laughs> yes, I'm a fire sign. Can you tell? <laughs> But you know what? It's not about negative people. This is not negative people sparking this conversation. I feel like this conversation needs to be had in this spiritual community. I think this is I think it's time someone talks about it. You want to know something that really irked me is the word spiritual. I don't I I have never called myself a spiritual person. The only time that I've ever called myself a spiritual person was when I was not awakened. It was when I was not seeing the truth. In my opinion, in my experience with divinity, spirituality is an experience of divinity to experience divinity of all things, including that of yourself and the world around you, that is spirituality. When you say, I am spiritual, you're actually egoic. 
you are spiritually egoist. When you are um, living here within your crown chakra, you enter the realm of understanding. Toth, light codes. Understanding. I understand spirituality. I am not spiritual. I am not spiritual. I'm not a guru. I'm not a fucking healer. I'm not this. I'm not that. I'm just me. I'm Reem. And my name means gazelle in Arabic. I'm a gazelle. That's me. And I'm understanding spirituality and I'm understanding divinity and I'm understanding what unconditional love means. And I read energy and I see this and I see that. You want to label me? Fine. You want to, you want, you want to label me? Go ahead. But I am not spiritual. I'm experiencing divinity. And when you experience divinity, your entire world changes. And then you start to see what the fuck is actually going on here. And then you realize it's not, it's not about... not about being spiritual. It's about experiencing spirituality, experiencing divinity. Yeah. Spirit really wants us to loosen our grip around this need to know, yet when it comes to love and relationships, that is not the focus now. It's forcing it before its time will bring tremendous pain. Yep. Yep. It, it Yes, I love that. It is a state of understanding. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so this goes back to, you know, that person saying, you don't look like a tarot reader. And I was like, what is a tarot reader supposed to look like? You know, I, I've encountered incredible people who were, you know, they're mechanics and they're having supernatural experiences. And I, and I, again, I said this in that Leo reading, you experience divinity in spaces that you do not think divinity would be there, but divinity is everywhere. And when you open yourself up to that realm, it appears to you. It shows up because you have shown up without What's the word? Without um, expectation. Without expectation of what divinity should look like, of what spiritual, spiritual people look like, or how they act, or things that they say, or you shouldn't swear because that's not spiritual, that's not high vibe. Well, then fuck it. I don't want to be high vibe today then. I just want to be me. I feel like a lot of people are starting to understand this, but there's also a lot of other people that don't know what the fuck they're doing. And they're in it because it's trending. They're in it because tarot looks nice and they get to play with crystals and they get to play with spirits. Well, you want to come in here acting like that, having expectations, thinking that you can you can be here, you're going to get fucked. You, you're going to get fucked up.
your ancestors don't joke around, spirits will will screw with you. There are some people, like, I'm truly not shocked that they go back to religion after they, after they, they, they're on this journey and then they, they, they see what it is and they're just like, never mind. I'm going to go back to religion. I'm going to go back here. You want to know why? Because they saw something. They saw their darkness. They, they saw their shadow or spirit fucked with them because they came in with expectations and they didn't learn. They didn't learn. You're going to get fucked. I've heard so many stories. I've even seen, I'm not going to talk about it here, but I'm going to see, I've seen some things where I'm just like, wow, wow. It's because they didn't actually do the work. Do you know, I've seen tarot readers with huge ass platforms that go back to religion That tells me that they didn't do the work. They got scared. Listen, I use the word God here because I do believe in God. I just don't believe God is is within the constructs of systematic religion. I work with goddess Sanana Ishtar, who is one of the most ancient goddesses known to the first civilization of man before Christ. Probably going to get canceled for saying that. But that's the fucking truth. You guys want to work with gods, deities, goddesses. I mean, you have to be, you have to be authentic. You can't come in here with this mentality of, oh, I have to be high vibe. I can't swear. I have to be prim and proper. I have to be what a spiritual person looks like. You can't come in here like that. You have to show up as you. That's why I say I've met some really incredible people. I've seen some really incredible people that are just like mechanics. They work a nine to five job. They They work at a grocery store and they have had incredible experiences with divinity because they're just open to it. And they don't look like tarot readers. They don't look like spiritualists. Come as you are. Oh, no, I'm good. I don't need a hug. I'm good. Spirit's hugging me. My ancestors got me. I have divine support. I support me. My parents love me. My friends love me. Like, I'm good. Like, you guys love me. I'm good. I'm not saying this out of anger. I'm saying this out of passion and out of truth. How did we start the reading? You're not being shown you're just seeing. And when you see, you cannot unsee the truth. The high priestess is holding the ace of swords. Here we go. You're going to cut some people with the truth as well. You're going to cut some people with the truth. Thank you. There are some things that I know that I have seen, truths that have been down downloaded, things that I have been putting together, and I know the world is not ready for it. I know the world is not ready for it, and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting for this truth to come out. I'm waiting. I don't know if I'm going to be the one that's going to deliver it or if I'm going to just backpedal and be like, yep, I stand with him I, or I stand with her. I saw that too. It's coming. <laughs> I'm telling you, a lot of you are going to be receiving hard truths, high priestess holding the ace of swords, and you're going to put that truth in your pocket until it's fucking time. 
until it's time. Anyway, I wasn't expecting this, so this is why I, 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 I wanted to avoid this collective read because I knew that it was about truth. I knew it was about showing up authentically, and I knew that the truth is not always pleasant. The truth does not get spoon fed to you like here. Would you like some truth? No, sometimes it literally hits you like a ton of, of bricks. Yeah, my downloads have been crazy this week. Um, I've been receiving a lot of downloads for myself, um, piecing a lot of things together that I shared briefly. I shared a little bit of some of the things that I started to come into knowing of, but not all. Um, you know, I got to keep things a mystery. Can't always reveal everything to you guys. Um, but yeah, I received Virgo's channeled message today. Um, Gemini is coming up. Let me see. Gemini is coming up. Scorpio is coming up. Leo is coming up. Sagittarius is also coming up. Taurus is coming up. Um, I started to get little breadcrumbs today. They just like came in so heavy. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I I do love I love showing up as myself now. I wouldn't have it any other way. I wouldn't want to be any other person. And that's again, that's how I want you guys to feel. Like I want you guys to feel so empowered to be yourself because truly that is magic. That's where your magic is. I love you guys so much. So much. I'm not just fucking saying that. I Like a lot of you guys know I don't do this for any other reason. I didn't dream of being on this platform. It's uncomfortable for me, but I found power in it within myself. Didn't I just do Aquarius? I swear I just did Aquarius. I could be wrong, but let me see. Yeah, I did Aquarius 10 days ago, honey. Tabish, I did Aquarius 10, 10 days ago. <laughs> I'm like, I just did Aquarius. <laughs> um, I'm open for personal readings, as you guys know. Um, you can join membership on the channels. I do weekly membership on the channel. Um, every Wednesday, there's about 18 readings on there now. So, yeah, you guys can join that. I also have a theory of, like, why. I Yeah, I, there, I do offer personal readings, sweetie, um, on my website. You can go there. Oh, thank you, Deanna. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't want to be here. And then I started getting messages. <laughs> you know what I want? You know what I wanted to be? I wanted to be um, a lawyer because I'm, I'm very argumentative sometimes <laughs> and I'm always right. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Um, I, then I wanted to be like a paralegal. I wanted to be a pharmacist. 
I wanted to be like a lot of different things. And then I ended up being a project manager for 10 years. But um, I've always had this connection with spirit since I was young. Very, very young. I had a lot of supernatural experiences when I was young, 5, 10, 11 years old, 13 years old. I'll never forget them to this day. And I just fell into this. I didn't want to be here. You know what's funny? Like someone said that you, you get to your destiny when you start avoiding it or something like the path to your destiny is the path that you always avoid or something like that. Like you, you still end up at your destiny. <laughs> and I'm like, that's exactly what happened to me. I avoided this path so much that I still ended up here. <laughs> anyway, I'm sure you guys are sick of me now. I'm here for an hour and 40 minutes. Um, I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for being here with me. Maybe one day I will share my story with you guys. You know, when I'm young, what happened, uh, my supernatural experiences, what are they? I know there's some people that are very curious, and I don't mind sharing. I think it's important to share. Um, yeah. Thank you, guys. So, yeah, opened up for personal readings. Um, link. I didn't put anything in my description, so it's just my website, therarigazelle.com. There is a five, it's still a five to six month wait list. Um, so again, do readings when guided. I don't know what you mean by doing Pisces. I literally just did Pisces and I do readings when guided. So I'm also the type of person, like, if you tell me to do something, I I absolutely, I absolutely will not do it. <laughs> so I don't like being told what to do. Um, so Pisces is up. I already did Pisces. So I don't know what, you, what you're talking about. Okay. I'm going to go walk my, walk my doggy, walk bunny, and then I'm going to have some wine and be a little bit low vibrational because I want to. And I'm going to enjoy it. So please enjoy living your life how the fuck you want to. If you want to swear. If you don't want to swear. <laughs> if you want to drink wine. Oh, Bunny. She's um, she's just in her bed. I don't know if she'll come here. Mama, you want to come say hi? Do you want to come say hi? Come here. Oh, she's coming. Huh, Mama, you want to come? You want to come here? Come here, and then I'll take you out. Come make an appearance. Okay, she's not coming. She also doesn't like being told what to do. She, my Actually, Bunny is a Pisces, my dog. Her birthday is March 13th. Um, my parents both are Pisces. Um, my best friend is a Pisces. I, I love Pisces. All right, my love. I will see you guys next time uh, for Virgo next week. And yeah, have a good evening. Love you guys. Bye.